Hello friends, welcome to our channel Knowledge Amplifier. So today in this particular video, we are going to discuss about data as a service or in short PaaS. Okay. So already we have heard about infrastructure as a service, then platform as a service, even software as a service we have explored, and then when we explored AWS Lambda, it was kind of nothing but a function as a service. Now another service we are going to explore and that is data as a service. Okay. And nowadays this particular service is becoming very popular because data is the new oil. Right. So data as a service is nothing but a business model where data is made available on demand and regardless of consumer's location or infrastructure. Okay. So basically we have to build such system where the customer or consumer will request for some data irrespective of their location or their infrastructure we need to make that particular data readily available and provide that to the requester right so that's the simple concept of data as a service okay now from this particular definition itself i hope you can understand some very vital points number one is when we are not considering consumers location or consumers own infrastructure and then we have to provide the data Let's consider a situation, for example, consumer is requesting huge volume of data or sometime it can be small volume of data also. So we need to make sure that our backend system support big data analytics as well as some small data set ad hoc analytics also. Okay, so infrastructure we need to handle, right? So obviously we should be opting for some cloud infrastructure and irrespective of consumer's location, if we want to provide the data, that time the best option should be API based. Okay. Because from any location, maybe that is mobile device or maybe that is some system or any application from anywhere, the customer can make a request using that particular API. Maybe that is a post request and there the customer will be sharing that this data I need, that customer's query. Maybe that is an SQL query the customer will be sharing. The backend infrastructure will execute that particular SQL query and provide that particular result set back to the customer that kind of service we need to develop. So obviously one thing I hope you understood that is we need some sort of API and our backend system should be scalable. It should handle big data analytics also, small data set ad hoc analytics also. Okay. And the infra should not be very much complex. So considering all these points to implement data as a service, most of the companies opt for Athena. Why? Because Athena is a serverless powerful engine. It can query big data set also from S3. And once our data, once the customer data is available in S3, we can easily create an external table pointing to this S3 location and it will be basically giving us an interface to run SQL query. So what the customer can do using some sort of API, the customer can send the request what query result set they want to get and that query we will be executing using Athena. Basically that Athena will be using S3 data only. And once the data is ready, we'll be sending that particular data back to the customer. So this is a simplified model or architecture for our data as a service, right? Now, how we can integrate Athena with API? So obviously one possible option is AWS step function, right? Because Athena has a default feature that whenever we submit the query, it just return us one particular query ID and in the backend, it run the query in asynchronous manner. We don't need to wait for the query to be completed, right? So generally what we do, we submit the SQL query in Athena and then Athena give us one particular query ID back and we basically poll using this particular query ID with certain time interval that whether the Athena query status is completed or failed. If it is running, we need to again poll after some certain time interval. So that particular architecture here we have implemented using AWS step. Already I explained this particular thing in my previous video. You can check the link given in the description box. So here this is a simple step function where this step function we can trigger using the API which is built using API gateway and here initially we'll be having a lambda function which is acting as a SQL submitter. Okay, it will submit that particular SQL query to Athena and then here we'll be having a wait block maybe 10 second or 5 second depending on requirement and we'll be having another lambda which will pull using that particular query ID to our Athena system whether the query is completed or not. If it is not completed, again it will wait for a few seconds and then again pull after certain time interval. 
and if the query strategy is completed or failed then it will go to this particular step where we are basically sending the result set using AWS SMS right so this is a typical AWS step function architecture but here if you observe this pulling step this particular step is not very efficient because think like this way your query may take half an hour or your query may be completed within 10 seconds so it is having a varying range for query execution time so how we can avoid this polling step because depending on the query execution time we might need to pull lot of time so that time this particular lambda need to execute again and again and it might be little bit waste of resource and unnecessarily cost more money for our system right so how to avoid this and make the system even driven instead of poll based architecture that we are going to explore in the data as a service model okay so for that we can use event bridge rule for athena queries and what is that it is nothing but whenever our athena query state get changed maybe initially it is queued from queued it, it goes to running from running it goes to completed or failed right so whenever athena query status get changed that time it emit that particular event in our event rule so this particular concept we can use to avoid unnecessarily polling multiple times and how this particular architecture works let me explain you this complete architecture is event driven so here let's start from completely left here we are having an user who will be making a request using the api built using api gateway what are the important information the user need to pass to the api one should be what sql query result set user want to get next is user email id okay because here email id is very important as once our athena query execution is completed we need to send that particular result back to the user right so email id is needed then apart from that database okay in which database this particular query will be executed and then if you consider work group okay is a very important parameter for athena query execution we are having different work groups for different workloads maybe for data analytics team we are having one particular work group for data engineering another for business analyst team another like that for data scientist team another work group so that particular user should be specifying the work group in which the query will be executed and based on that billing will happen okay right so sql query email id database work group and apart from that the last important point is s3 location where the result set will be written because whenever Athena execute the query the result set is stored in one particular S3 location by default right now when I submit the query using lambda function using python code that time we need to mention in which S3 location the Athena should be writing the data so that in future we can take the data from that particular S3 location and send back to the user right so these are the important parameters what the user need to pass while making request for a data right and what the api will do it will trigger our lambda function which may be written using python or your favorite language and it will basically read all these parameters and submit a query in the athena right so initially it will be queued state so that particular response it will be getting back the lambda will be having that unique query id as well which basically we can use at later point of time to check the status and all those things we can do if needed so that particular query id also lambda will get and then the lambda will make an entry in our dynamodb table okay very important what are the values we can store in dynamodb one is what sql query we tried to execute one is email id database work group s3 location and along with that that particular athena query id and athena query state when the lambda submitted the query right that particular state also the lambda will store in dynamodb location okay obviously most of the time the default state initially will be queued so that is fine so here in dynamodb we have stored the state and all the other metadata information then here in the backend in an asynchronous manner athena can execute the query and store the result in s3 location now once the athena query is executed obviously state will be changed and then using that particular state change in event bridge we can trigger a event rule right that event rule can trigger another aws lambda function and that lambda function will basically get the information that this particular athena query state is changed and obviously in this event rule the query id will be there so if this state is changed to succeeded right or query is completed something like that then what this lambda can do it can go back to that particular dynamodb table 
and using that particular query id it can fetch all the metadata information that who submitted that particular query what is the email id and all those information it will get from dynamodb and then what this lambda can do this lambda can send that particular data to the user using that particular email id right because the query execution now completed now what in the email it will be having it will basically give this kind of information that the data what you were looking for that our system or dash system data as a service system has generated and please find this data now the another question might come how the lambda will be sharing that particular data because the data can be very huge sometime because athena can execute the big data also depending on user requirement so let lambda not send that particular data directly as a csv attachment what we can do that athena will obviously store the data in some s3 location what user has given input right now what lambda will do lambda will be creating a pre-signed url from that s3 location data and that pre-signed url it will be sharing in the email and eventually it will be going to the user and that particular pre-signed url may be valid for two hours or something like that that configuration we can do and within two hours of time the user can just simply click on that particular data and download it right because pre-signed url is already authenticated so here i hope you can understand this particular data as a service system is completely serverless and completely event driven like in our rda system we need to call multiple times and it may happen that our athena query can take long time to run that time multiple calls will be unnecessarily wasted but in this case no call needed complete event driven architecture and the central concept is event bridge rule for athena query execution that athena query state whenever it changes that time it publishes that particular event in event bus so that event rule we can use to trigger our successive lambda function and this lambda will send email only if the athena query state is changed to succeeded or failed if it is succeeded it will send the information that see the data what you were looking for that is available and please find the data and there it will be attaching the pre-signed url right so what is pre-signed url that also i have covered in my previous video you can check the link given in the description box now let me show you a very simple demo of this particular query state change i will not execute this complete flow because it is pretty simple and i have already discussed several ideas around it so if you check my prerequisite videos you can easily implement but rather the new concept what i am going to show you that whenever athena query state gets changed it will publish that particular event in event bridge and using that we can trigger the lambda or we can send email that kind of a simple pipeline i'm going to show you so here i will go to my aws management console and here i can open event bridge and maybe for example when athena query state will change we want to send notification to sns and using that ultimately we want to send an email right so here what i will do i will create a topic and here standard i can choose maybe athena demo yt state change okay and then here access policies as of now i can simply keep everyone can publish and everyone can receive for production system we can fine tune that and here our topic is created now obviously we need to create a subscription that when the message will be published in sns topic in what destination it should forward that particular message so here we want to send an mail so let me open my mail so here this is my mailbox all i will do i will click on create subscription in our sns topic and i want to send email the email id i'll be providing and i will click on create subscription so automatically in real time one particular mail will be coming in our mailbox from aws to verify that particular subscription so here i need to click on confirm subscription and with this it is confirmed and here if you see if i go to this particular topic here you will see that status is confirmed now in this particular sns topic if any message get published it will be sending that particular message to this mail okay now here what i will do i will be creating a rule which will basically send that particular event related to athena query state change to our sns topic so here create rule and here demo yt athena state change okay this is the name and then here rule with event pattern i need to choose and aws service what aws service i want to use athena and if athena state get changed that time we want to send that event so this is basically 
option what we have to choose that is athena query state change now i'll click on next now here what is the destination for our event tool so in this case it is sns topic and here i need to choose my sns topic and that is basically this particular one athena demo yt state change just now what we have created i will click on next if we want you can add tags and i will simply create the rule okay so with this our framework is ready now whenever i will execute some query in athena let me just open athena and let me try to execute some query and you will see whenever query state will get changed automatically mail will be coming in this particular mailbox so here i am having some sample athena query so here i will just execute select start from this particular data just to show you a sample demo so initially the query should be in queued state then it should be in running state and then it should be in success or fail state right so i'll just run this particular query here you have seen that initially queued then running then completed okay it has returned the data now the query state eventually get changed right initially queued then from queued it went to running then from running it went to completed so these are three events so three events should be published in our sns and eventually three mails should be coming in our mailbox so let's see here if you see aws notification 3 that means perfectly our pipeline has worked let me open the email so first mail if you see here the mail might have came little bit jumbled manner so current state is running and previous state queued so when the status gets changed from queued to running that time this particular event was triggered right next one let's see if you observe current state queued so this is the first stage what our athena query was having right initially queued then from queued it went to running and the last one should be related to complete or success you see that current state is succeeded previous state was running right so this is how we can build such pipeline where whenever athena query state will change it can trigger some event right and obviously as i told you that query execution id will be also attached in that event here if you observe this is the query execution id which is constant across all the mails if i just show you initially this one then this one then this one right so this query execution id we can basically use as primary key for our DynamoDB table, okay, and we can update the status in the DynamoDB table using this particular lambda function whenever Athena query status will change to succeeded or fail, something like that, right? So, I hope you understood this that how to build a data as a service system using Athena event based lambda, DynamoDB, and in a complete serverless mode. And this whole pipeline also, if you are interested to implement. I'll be sharing a GitHub repository link in the description box. You can follow from there. And that complete pipeline is developed using Python. And I hope you'll be facing no problem because already Athena and Python related concept is covered in our this channel. You can check the reference video links also. So this is all for my this video. If you find this video helpful, then please like, share and comment. Subscribe our channel if you have not subscribed till now. And don't forget to press the bell icon to get the notification of our latest videos. Thank you for watching.